thing you need to make sure is man these mosquitoes are killing me make sure your kayak says hobie on it even if it's not a hobie just get a sticker and it'll just make you feel better What is up guys, Fishigan Milligan here. We have a treat today. We're gonna do a walkthrough of the entire kayak. So you guys stay tuned, don't miss this. You're gonna see everything I have here set up on the Hobie PA-12. If you guys were watching my last video, you will know that I was using this anchor pin a lot. So I'm not one of those guys who has a giant power pole on the kayak. I just keep it simple with this little stick pin and make sure you have yourself a floaty. It goes right here, full and anchor system. Nice and anchored down. The last episode I was fishing with JC and he really likes to anchor down and just take his time to work the spot. Really invaluable. If you can't use this, grab a little weight and make yourself a little makeshift anchor. I prefer a bending branches paddle. This is a great paddle and it also comes with the ruler so I can measure my giant fish. Also, when you're kayak fishing, don't forget your net and your stringer. I don't know how many times I get out there and I forget my net and my stringer. I just catch so many fish, guys. I mean, I'm always taking three reds and uh, now three trout. Um, I'm just killing it all the time I get out there. No, I'm just kidding, guys. Actually, fishing has been really tough and all this fresh water and stuff has been making it really tough to catch fish. So if you guys have any tips, hook a brother up, man, because it's been tough out there. I'll tell you what. All right, guys, the other thing you need to make sure you have is these wheels right here. This makes it super easy to uh, wheel it around uh, because if you have to carry this thing, it's not light. It's very heavy. Luckily, in the last episode, I had uh, fishing with JC help me carry it down to the Pier 19. But uh, oh my gosh, it can get heavy. So make sure you don't forget your wheel. So if I had to give one gripe to this Hobie PA-12, overall, it's a great kayak. But one of the things I really don't like are these rod holders. These rod holders are no bueno. And I went ahead and heated up some PVC and I did a little makeshift rod extension. This little rod extension made out of PVC goes all the way down in there and it gives you a nice extra a nice extra long rod holder and I really do like this because this right here gets in the way every time I try to put the rod in this is in the way so I want that out I should probably just rip it off and I want oops wrong way I would rather have this in here and that is the way to go Make sure that these drain plugs are in. You don't want to go out there with these things not tightly sealed. Make sure you have this here. Make sure it's a kayak PFD because the kayak one doesn't have the um, padding all the way down. It actually has a nice mesh back. So it allows you to, uh, to stay a little bit cooler. Uh, these Hobie seats are awesome, but actually when I was out last time, this broke so my seat went straight down like this it went straight down and it was really awkward the rest of the day but uh, other than that it was pretty great and i came home and i fixed it and i just tied a knot i think it was a uni knot and then i burnt the edges so it wouldn't come undone so now it's pretty good so as my buddy nacho says let's get down to the nitty gritty all right everybody wants a hobie because of these right here now the reason why hobie was number one at the top of the charts is because they had a patent on these flippers and nobody i repeat nobody was able to make anything similar like it but the patent ran out and when it ran out everybody started to make it so you don't have to have a hobie guys this is just the original it makes it a lot easier when you have to pedal out there but um you can paddle i know a lot of guys who go miles offshore just with that 
And if your upper body strength is like the rock, then go ahead. Mine is not, I will rely on my legs. Okay, so these rod holders are pretty great for spinning, uh, not as great for bait casters. You know, they work pretty good. It goes down in here like that. And I really like how it's snug, so that's not gonna come out. Usually I am running uh, two rods, sometimes three. Um, I also do have the Hobie crate that goes in the back. I just haven't really used it yet, but I probably will this next time because this whole flat space is great. Um, but normally I put a backpack and tying it down because when you turn around, you're gonna wanna have easy access to whatever it is. And it's kind of a pain to unzip this and all that good stuff. The other thing I forgot to mention is I also have this right here, which is really great for when, let's say you're unhooking a fish, you see me in the videos, I'll put the kayak holder to use or the rod holder to use on this kayak and it'll be there and I'll go ahead and take care of the fish, throw the fish back in the water and then keep fishing. So this is a nice addition here. This is made by Hobie, but you know, you can make your own, you know, I like to keep it pretty simple. I like to keep it pretty light because it is a heavy kayak. So that being said, it is kind of a heavy kayak. It does serve all my needs. I'm able to go pretty far. I try not to venture more than like eight to 10 miles when I'm out there. Um, just because you know it is tiring because i really don't want to rely on my upper body strength and these bad boys i'd rather rely on my legs uh the biggest muscles in your body are your legs so why not use your legs right thing that i recommend if you're going to be taking this kayak out here is get yourself a t-bar that goes here on your truck now this t-bar is very very invaluable if you don't have like a trailer or something so let me show you guys that real quick. Okay, so this is the T-bar I use. I recommend zip tying some soft foam or something like that on it uh, because this is pretty hard and you don't want it to be scraping there on the bottom of your kayak. Make sure your rudder is up before you load it. Another part about this Hobie system that isn't talked about too much is this rudder system right here. Now, this is the only way you're gonna be able to steer right, left and all that stuff. So you pull this out and you move it to the side, let it go, and the rudder is able to come down like so. You have a switch on the Hobie and it will turn this right, left, and all that stuff. If you're using the foot pedals, that is your propulsion to go forward, but then your right and left comes from these little over here if you're right-handed, it's a little big. It's kind of a pain, I wish they had two long ones, but that one's, anyways, that one's a short one. That one's a short, tiny little guy. This one's a lot bigger. This is a little easier when you have a cameraman and not just one hand to film. And then you go ahead and make sure to latch it down through first with the bolt that goes through there and a clip pin. Pull this down and the kayak will go on top and slide in. And then hopefully your truck or SUV or whatever has these uh, clips. Go ahead and get, strap it in, some straps. It's pretty easy when you have these wheels, make sure the rudder is up before you do load it because that would be bad. Dude, these bad boys are tightened down. What I do like about the Hobie is it does have nice big full bars with this Hobie Pro Angler. The Outback does not. The Outback has a handle on one side and the other side just has like a little rope handle, which is, eh, it's okay, but I'd rather have this one. Pro tip, make sure that you always rinse this off, guys, because this is metal, and we are always in the salt water for the most part. And this right here will get messed up by oysters. It's just rubber. So it will get messed up by oysters and sharp rocks and other things like that. So make sure you water it down, oil it up, grease it up, and uh, make sure to take care of these because these are expensive, and it is the life of this Hobie kayak. You get this bad boy, you put it down, and it just locks right into place. And I recommend maybe like a leash or something because if this were to fall out and go through and you were in deep water, there would be no way to retrieve this right here. When you're ready to remove it, you just click here, click here, pull it out. Um, the other thing is if you're in like super shallow water, do is I would make these flippers go out and I would make them 
lay flat on the bottom here and that way you can get in some super shallow water because if it is like 12 to 18 inches these things are going to scrape on the bottom and you might not get in as skinny of water as you want to cool thing about this uh, system here is that it comes with this case and it is insulated so if you wanted to keep some ice or maybe keep some fish in here you totally could it'd probably get nasty i'd rather just leave it tied to the side with a stringer or something like that um, but pretty good storage over here um, i probably need to invest in some gopro mounts here around the edges um, but nice little storage here um, i do have some pliers some floaties cell phone case to make sure everything's nice and dry i probably need to throw this trash out but this is nice it's cool it comes out so you can go ahead and clean it and all that good stuff anyways this is the bottom of the kayak Ooh, so cool yeah i know awesome so this seat is pretty awesome it's fully adjustable you can go ahead and click here and it will make that seat go up and you can also turn this right here you can also turn this right here and this will go up and it will just you know adjust to your liking it's pretty great the other thing is if you want to sit higher you can pull this thing up and there you go now you're sitting higher which if that's what you want to do great if not then just go ahead and leave it back down make sure you latch it down because I didn't do that one time and I came home and I was like, oh my gosh, if I would have flipped over, this seat would have been gone. The other thing that you wanna make sure you have is this flag here um, because it is gonna be sticking out and protruding out of the back of your truck there. And it is by law that you need to have a red flag for anything that is sticking out like that. So don't forget the red flag or a towel or shirt, any sort of red piece of cloth will do. All right, let's load it up. So. Normally, I use the wheels, I line it up, and then I come over here, and I pick this up. I like this big, nice bar. Pick it up, put it on here, and then I'll just slide it all the way inside, and I'll make sure that that is nice and clean, and there's not stuff in there. But anyways, and uh, super secure, guys. It has these little uh, handles here, these little loops. So I usually do one, wrench from here all the way around the kayak there and another one here just around the nose right there so all right guys thank you so much for tuning in thank you for letting me share with you guys i'm not an expert by any means i'm learning just like you guys are so if you learned something in this video smash the like if you like what you're seeing here at fishigan milligan go ahead and subscribe stick around we're doing awesome things. We're doing new things all the time, trying different things. We go to the jetties, we take out the kayak, we go on a boat with Captain Eli. We wade fish, we bass fish, we do all sorts of different stuff. So thank you guys for coming out. If I missed anything, go ahead and leave a comment or anything like that. If you'd like for me to cover anything that you guys have seen, go ahead and let me know. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time, hopefully on the water.